Thank you. Very well spoken, Blinet Akol. Congratulations, and that ka elevator pitch, eh? we all had it. <laughs> well, we did. Uh, well, for another winner, in 2019, Sandra Ajang is the one, Ajang, apologies. Sandra Ajang is the one who took the title. She's coming to the stage to share her experience. Started off as, um, as, an, as, as a means for an extra income. But, uh, well, the, the, there's this company, The Hive. They had, a very good, uh, they had a very good marketing strategy. They convinced us that if you buy, if you buy hives within the first year of, uh, of having the hives, you're going to recover your initial investment. And it, it looked like a very good plan. They were going to buy the honey off of us at a very good rate. And uh, my boyfriend then said, you know what? This would be very good for business. We should do this. Imagine in one year, money will, will, will be back. So we invested about 10 million. Bought that. We bought 10 hives with, uh, with accompanying um, tools. We took it to Kigumba, where we have land. And we sat back and relaxed, because they told us, you don't have to do anything in beekeeping. A year later, we had insects in the hives. There was no honey. So we started working with households. Um, then there were NGOs that were giving people free hives and these people were using the, the hives to store their clothes because there was no follow-up. So I decided I could actually make something out of it. I encouraged them to do beekeeping, put out the hives. I was learning and then uh, I would buy honey off of them. Their biggest challenge was market. So I offered market, I offered to buy the honey and then for some of them, they also needed more hives and they didn't have money to pay for the hives. So I started giving them sort of uh, microfinance in the form of hives. So I give you hives and you pay back with 30% of harvested honey and then 70% of the honey I pay you cash. I started with 15 households and now I have over 500 farmers that I work with. I, uh, I got into the Mandela Washington Fellowship. I was in the US for six weeks. I met with several beekeepers. I learned more, especially about packaging. So when I came back, that's when I started packaging and um, adding value to the honey. Right now, we have over 30 products, I think. We are basically creating the whole value chain in beekeeping. So from uh, the beekeeping, we harvest, uh, we harvest propolis, we harvest bee venom, we harvest honey, we harvest wax and all of it, we turn it into something useful. For example, the wax, we sell it as wax, but we also make cosmetics using the wax. More than 32,000 people are in... Hello, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I feel like I've arrived. <clears throat> Especially given that the, mini the Honorable Minister is here, I don't even know how to address all of you right now. <laughs> um, Honorable Minister, DFCU Bank, Nation Media, Uganda Investment Authority, uh, thank you for this opportunity, I guess. I heard somebody say protocol observed, so I'll say that as well. <laughs> Uh, my name is Sandra Ejang Elobu, and I'm a beekeeper. I work with rural households. I, you heard me say there that I had 500 farmers. I now have over 1,000. Today, I was actually supposed to be in Lamo. And uh, since the last time, we have over 40 new products. And uh, we are also in Carrefour. So we are selling an average of two tons of honey monthly, but we are still looking for money <laughs> to expand. I feel like we are not doing enough and we could do more. Um, when I got into Rising Woman, the day of the final pitch, I actually had a nine-day-old baby. So during the interview, the interviewers were actually babysitting. Maybe that's why I won. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I came here alone today 
but I have over 30 staff now, and that's because we have a lot of demand for the product, so they had to stay and look for money. Um, DFCU Bank gave me a lot of visibility. I have, I'm still waiting for, I'm still waiting for um, the services of Uganda Investment Authority because <laughs> um, one of my complaints was um, most of our products don't have standards for UNBS, so only one of our product is actually certified. I've tried to bring it up, but I've not gotten any feedback. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Um, yeah, so um, DFCU has, I mean, the, the, when I had just joined, I thought if I was very nice, I sent, um, I sent gift vouchers. Uh, forgive me for having a very uncoordinated story, but you'll see where I'm going with all of this. So I sent gift vouchers, I got some feedback, uh, which, which encouraged me, but after a while I felt like, I felt like I wasn't getting the sort of feedback I needed. Um, I had hoped that with my story, coming with a nine day old baby to one interview, it would help to push more publicity, especially for women, because sometimes as a woman you feel like if I have a baby, maybe the husband is going to say no, or where am I going to leave the baby, or if I went with the baby, what's going to happen? I, I, I sort of expected DFCU to really push that story. Uh, it would probably encourage a startup or a woman in the market that even with a baby, you're still able to go to those meetings, you're still able to go and pitch, especially if it's important enough for you. So, yes, now because of DFCU, at that point I had started uh, value addition, say with the lotions and stuff, but I was able to buy uh, an oil press machine with the money that I won. And because of the oil press machine, right now we actually, we, we've, uh, we've given more farmers opportunities because now the farmers that were not able to do the um, beekeeping are able to grow sunflower, uh, simsim, chia seeds. At some point, chia seeds had no market. I think some Indians came and told the villagers to grow and they offered, they were offering, I think, 4,000 a kilo. During, after the harvest, there was, they had nothing to offer. I think they were paying 2,000. So we went ahead and bought, and guess what? We have our own cold press chia seed oil, which is a new product on the market, but quite valuable. So with all of that, we are able to use that with the honey to add more value and create better products. Um, also, because of uh, the Rising Woman competition, I got a lot of visibility, which helped me to open a shop at the back of Acacia Mall, which is a highly strategic place. So we have, we have significant access to market, has also helped us talk to other women and bring them on board, which essentially is also creating market for a lot of the other women, because we have a place where they can put their products. That was one of the things we learned from Nairobi um, during the, um, that uh, mentorship visit. Those, we, those guys are doing amazing things. So we felt like we were sleeping. We've woken up and, yeah. Uh, eh, I think I've run out of words. <laughs> um, I'm very happy with where the business is and where we are going. Also, through Rising Woman, actually, I got contacted by the French Embassy a while back, and we were supposed to go to France and take some products for sampling, but uh, due to Omicron in December, we were not able to do that, and I'm still hopeful that the trip is going to happen. Now I'm going to let you people in on what my big secret is on how I'm going to get into that market. We are going to sell the honey in portions instead of going big and say threatening to send tons that I know we are not able to produce right now. We are going to sell a story of, a, of say people in Karamoja because there's a lot of honey from there as well. So we're going to sell say 
50 tons. Not 50 tons, 50 kilos. We say every month we can give you 50 kilos of honey only. Um, with that, and, the, and a very nicely crafted story. It, won't, it will be crafted in a nice way. It won't be a lie because um, most of our farmers say in places like Karamoja and Lamo are actually mothers. Now these mothers at the beginning of the school term struggle a lot with school fees. We are giving them loans right now and if we're able to get a higher value for the honey, we are actually able to help them more, which will hopefully send more children to school. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sandra. Isn't she amazing? Give her another hand clap. Well, it's usually said that when you skill a woman, you skill a nation. And I think it is proof. She's an entrepreneur, but now she's also an employer. And she's also uh, chattering new opportunities for people in different regions of the country. I think that's outstanding. And uh, it's a great thing. But on this journey of skilling women in business, we are not alone. It's not only women that are fighting or corporate entities. We have the men with us as well. Can we clap for them? Thank you for joining us. And we are in the presence of greatness. Uh, we have uh, the acting managing director of Nation Media, Mr. Timothy Ntale. But also with us, we have Dr. Paul Chalimpa, who's the deputy executive director of Uganda Investment Authority. We also have William Sekabembe, or should I say Mr. William Sekabembe, uh, who's the executive director, chief of business, and Chief Commercial Officer at DFCU. We have uh, Mr. Mundua Godfrey, who's the Head of Corporate Banking at DFCU as well, who would like to welcome you officially to Rising Woman Season 5. And now, since I spoke of greatness, I'm going to call my <laughs> Acting Managing Director <laughs> from Daily Monitor. Please welcome with me, Mr. Ntali Timothy. Thank you, Becky. Becky is actually my sister. She's Nantali. Uh, um, the Honorable Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, um, Honorable Judith Namakova, the CEO of DS DFCU Bank, Mr. Matthias Katsamba, uh, Dr. Charimpa, the Deputy Director General of UIA, past winners uh, of the, this amazing initiative, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to witness the uh, fifth launch of this uh, amazing initiative. Uh, when we started this initiative, uh, we didn't know where the journey would lead us. Um, it became actually harder, uh, as you all know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, because many women in business uh, really struggled uh, and some actually went out of business. <clears throat> However, uh, for some women, we witnessed the resilience uh, and strong business-mindedness of uh, uh, women in business. You've just heard the story of uh, Sandra and Lynette. That's quite something. Uh, we are rooting for you. Uh, also, when, walks, when one walks through the, uh, the, the markets in Uganda today, you won't help but uh, appreciate and uh, salute the women in business in Uganda today. This Rising Women Initiative is in its fifth year, as some of you may know, and has impacted over 60,000 women uh, directly through programs such as the regional power trainings. Uh, the trainings have been conducted in Gulu, in Ishaka, uh, in Barara, and other places in the country. Uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we, 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 there was a lull of two years where we didn't do much. Uh, so the train is reduced, but our teams and our partners uh, innovated and we had, we organized virtual talk shows through which we, we kept engaging and mentoring women. <coughs> Excuse me. With this new approach, uh, through the platforms of daily, uh, of NMG, 
we, we, we reached approximately two million viewers, two, two million people uh, through these platforms. And it's also an indication that uh, it was an indication that our partners were, were committed to this because they came in to support uh, and uh, we saw some good things happen. Uh, and therefore, mine is really to thank our partners, that is DFCU Bank. I was talking to Dr. Chalimpa earlier that they've been with us from the beginning. Uh, this is the fifth, fifth year. And I also want to commit uh, uh, our willingness uh, as nation media um, to use all our platforms to, to support this great initiative. So I thank you, and I wish you all uh, a successful season five. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Well, we're still continuing Rising Woman season five. And uh, I wonder who the winner will be this time. We have trainings that are going to be starting uh, pretty soon. As for the proposal writing, it's going to begin today and it will close. So uh, you can let all the people in your networks know that there's, uh, there's an opportunity for them to get in touch. But that's not all. That is a writing session. We'll get 10 million shillings. And that's just seed funding. All together, the 10 winners in the proposal writing are going to be able to go for a mentorship trip. We do not know where they're going, <laughs> but I am sure there are people above me who know. So I am going to invite Mr. Actually, let me invite Dr. Chalimpa. Dr. Paul Chalimpa is the Deputy Executive Director of Uganda Investment Authority and is coming to speak to us. Chief, our partners in this journey, our previous winners, uh, you make us proud. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Once again, my name is Dr. Paul Jalimpa, the Deputy Director General, Uganda Investment Authority. We are pleased to be a part of the rising woman because a rising woman is a rising nation. UAA has from inception been part of this initiative. And as UAA, we have the Women Entrepreneurs Network which we found as allies to promote them as investors, as local investors. And the Rising Woman is a special program to help us uh, build capacity of the SME women entrepreneurs to uh, take lead in transforming our nation and to be part of the global success story where women, where uh, the women-led enterprises, when they succeed, the rest of the community succeeds. Uh, from the previous research we have undertaken as I was at university and other uh, research about women-led the first one is that women are willing and ready to start with whatever little capital. They start with whatever little capital there is. The second one, led enterprises are more resilient business challenges. And we, because the women who are the leaders never easily give up. And the third one is that when a woman 
lead the business and it generates profits. The proceeds are used to support the home, transform the community, and for the greater good of the entire humanity. Therefore, when you support a house came with a baby, that's a sign of resilience that the woman is willing to take on the challenge, does not easily give up. And that's why you have more women surviving enterprises. Those enterprises started by women survive longer than those started by men because of the resilience of the women. So uh, the women also uh, have limited access to competitive market. Capital to also responsibilities at home. Now, the limited access to market is especially international market because of uh, limitation in terms of certification of their products, as well as the time to explore physically international markets. And that's what we are saying. If you we can operate in business networks, we bring, we promote online business. This will provide the opportunity, a platform, for local SMEs to go international, what we call SME internationalization, through, through e-commerce or global uh, business networks. Finally, this program provides a platform for mentorship and training which improves the confidence of the women entrepreneurs as one of the challenges traditionally have had in Uganda. And once the woman has gained the confidence, her drive is unlimited. Uh, 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 as Sandra talked about, uh, the challenge of getting the, the, the standards support. Uh, you are a team, please stand up. So, what happened? Uh, you, you can take your seat. Please, um, after this, you come and get my business card. I, I will personally walk you to UNBS. I, I'm, I, I don't sit in the office just. I just move around and uh, ensure things are get, get done because I've been in the UN, UNBS uh, certification committee for eight years. So I know what it requires and uh, will provide the support. Uh, I think we shall engage and uh, we should be able to provide you the support. And the other women doing businesses even if you just intend to start, come to UIA. We have created a directorate that is in charge of domestic investment and is dealing especially with nurturing the SMEs with special focus on women to become investors. So this is one of the programs through which we work with the different partners support the women to reach, uh, to contribute significantly to our transformation as a country. Um, we shall also support the, the women uh, in this program and others to access market. Previous we have been in, uh, in the UAE, uh, Dubai, and we have a lot of business opportunities, including for my sister, Sandra. There are people who want to buy the organic products, including honey. You will come and give you the contact, and you engage directly.
Uh, DFCU has provided a platform for access, improving access to affordable finance, especially so, uh, through the, for the business association networks. Um, the special women advisory board uh, where my sister sits from Enterprise Uganda, where they are championing and uh, women uh, enter led enterprises. And the Enterprise Uganda, the other time, some time back, had the Women Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, and that f doesn't stop. Uh, please reach out to each of us to provide you the, the support you need. And um, sometimes before I leave, I give my telephone number so that uh, people do not think it's a private one. I'm here to serve. So if you get uh, limitations, uh, why we have the minister here, Honorable uh, Nabakova, when I was at UMI as a lecturer, I, I was able to, to work with her as she was doing some training there when she was still with the Uganda Police Services. So uh, I got, that's why I got her contact. I get to know her, what she does. And I'm pleased now she has uh, offered to serve the whole nation uh, as a part of retirement from Uganda Police. We thank you. So uh, we understand that land is a key asset to help us access financing. Thank you for Kurwani Sachibataka. Thank you for fighting for the local people uh, who are being cheated and who are having their land grabbed. Uh, we want to have more land certificates, parcels, which you can use as collateral. Even on the land for Kabaka, we want formal parcels, which you can use as collateral. Uh, to access more financing. So within the policy uh, uh, framework, uh, we want to improve access to, uh, to titles, which is the basis for us uh, to, uh, quite a lot in every financial institution, if you present that certificate, even on the Kabaka land, we want it, we can get financing from DFCU with it. So uh, our call is very clear on that one. And since you are here, we, are, we know of your commitment uh, with the museum to make sure that happens. And soon I'm, we are sure it will happen. So ladies and gentlemen, I end by saying that let's all work together to support the rising woman, because when you support the rising woman, we shall have a rising nation. I thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Chalimpa, for outlining the challenges and the opportunities for the rising woman. Well, we're still continuing with season five. He has mentioned something very, very interesting about access to affordable finance. Uh, and he has said DFCU is the one with the access to affordable finance. I think it's such a wonderful thing to hear. But we would like uh, the Chief Executive Officer of DFCU, Mr. Matthias Katamba, to come and elucidate. Judith Nawakova, Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, the Acting Managing Director of Nation Media Group, uh, Mr. Antale, with whom we have had a wonderful conversation here, the Deputy Director General of Uganda Investment Authority, Mr. Chalimpa, members of the DFCU Women in Business Advisory Council here present, Mrs. Rosemary Mutiavile and uh, Ms. Belinda uh, Namtevi. By the way, these are uh, accomplished entrepreneurs uh, in their own uh, right. 
uh, because uh, Mrs. Rosemary Mtabli has helped many entities uh, through her own work uh, to grow, but also you will probably know of the Ondava brand. Have you seen Ondava? Or have you walked through an airport uh, wearing it and felt proud? Uh, well, Belinda here uh, is the founder uh, of that Ondava uh, brand. So the job of promoting Uganda she took on single-handedly. The Executive Director of Uganda Women Entrepreneurs uh, Association, thank you very much for joining us. Distinguished guests, uh, ladies uh, and gentlemen, may I add all protocol observed. So sitting uh, where I was sitting and uh, listening to uh, Lynette, I will ask uh, Mr. Chalimpa uh, to compose himself so I can have the attention of the Honorable Minister. <laughs> that is a polite request. It is not every day that you speak in her presence. Thank you very much. I have situational power now. <laughs> you know, situational power by being on the microphone. You only hold it for a short period, so I intend to use it. That's a joke. You may laugh. <laughs> so you can't legislate laughter, but I thought that I would attempt. So listening to Lynette uh, uh, standing here and seeing where a business can come from and go, if it is given some attention, right? That was a very heartwarming thing. Uganda has some of the most creative people, uh, young people, if I may add, but they just need to be seen, right? To be seen, identified, and, and supported. Uh, you know, I remember Sandra at the event at Africana uh, when you were being recognized at that time with the baby. Uh, uh, never mind the fact that she wanted DFCU to work the angle of communication <laughs> in one way or another. But it was absolutely heartwarming to see today that you have 30 employees and distribute two tons. If you put into perspective two tons uh, of uh, honey, can you put two tons of honey in perspective, right? Those are 2,000 kilograms of honey. Uh, how many cages fit in a 40-foot container, or 20-foot, for instance? You, you're not, right? I know, but I wanted you to, to think further, right? And think about uh, containers with your product uh, moving out of the country, right? You're distributing carry four now, right? Uh, please, uh, do you want to clap? Usually, yeah. the, the, this is why, why we're here. She's sitting here has her products on the shelf of, of, of Carrefour. That's an international brand, right, that will probably have a lot of scrutiny uh, on what they put on their shelf, right? So glad that you sit in the room and are able uh, to do that. So Honorable Minister, it is true that ordinary people can do extraordinary things, right? Uh, you saw one young person here introducing high employees in managerial roles, having studied in Macquarie University, studying further in the areas in which they are doing. Someone is studying food science, studying by selling lollipops, lollipops and fruits. This is how you transform uh, the economy. Now, transformation is not leaps and bounds. It's not big things, right? It is things that everyday people can do. And this sits largely uh, in line with what DFCU is about, because our mission is about transformation of lives uh, and businesses, right? Just through what we do. Uh, through our empowered people and the innovative uh, products and projects uh, uh, we engage in. So there, Honorable Minister, I just gave a nod, a nod of approval uh, for the parish model, if you like. Uh, <laughs> that is as far as I go in commenting on politics. Uh, so uh, DFCU Bank uh, has been helping women to overcome financial barriers while supporting them in their quest for growth not just as a business proposition, but in fact uh, an obligation because we value the role of women in society. I'm going to read some prepared remarks. The DFCU Women in Business Program was established in 2007 with an overall objective of creating a business enabling environment for women entrepreneurs. Our approach uh, to banking women provides solutions to meet the unique financial needs of women whether it's a young professional, a woman engaged in business, or a woman 
involved in agri-business. So I would like our women in business uh, uh, manager, right? Uh, just uh, to come so you can uh, uh, see her here. Uh, yeah, this is Ruth, right? Uh, who is our new women in business manager. So wherever you have women uh, succeeding and wanting to succeed, Ruth will be there. She runs in a women in business center at our head office uh, uh, in Nakasero. So on the ground floor, you turn on the left, that's the center there she has fully fledged. Uh, you may please retreat. Thank you. So why women entrepreneurs? The reason that inspired this program and still uh, render it relevant today are very many. The contribution of women to the economy has been steadily growing over the years. Today, women own approximately 40% of SMEs in Uganda and employ nearly 2 million people. 40% uh, large registered uh, SMEs uh, but you had Rosemary actually uh, spoke uh, to the deeper truth, which means if it goes beyond 80%, if you go further down micro, uh, et cetera, the contribution of women is huge. And if you look at the single uh, parent households run uh, by women, you begin to see uh, the impact of this. Mm -hmm. If you go back and look at the scourge, for instance, of HIV at the time, as Uganda went through a phase, and how many households remained single parent uh, households, you would actually look around the room, many of you, and have women to thank for it. So if you want to clap, that's the sort of thing you clap for. But in spite of the unquestionable growth trends, women in business tend to have few opportunities, and there are many reasons. Uh, one of them is inadequate business skills and knowledge on how to operate uh, in the marketplace, usually with boardrooms filled by men making decisions, right? Limited access to credit, and uh, lack uh, of uh, collateral. Uh, this is changing uh, because in many ways now, women uh, uh, have ownership. So who qualifies for the Women in Business program? Really, any woman entrepreneur trading as a sole proprietor as a company where the woman holds 50% uh, of the shares and above, right? That makes many of the businesses. Ever since the program was started, over 80,000 members are currently registered in the DFC Women in Business program. Over 25,000 women have benefited from the capacity building sessions. Over 6,000 women have benefited from the Women in Business uh, loans. That is separate from our average normal daily lending. This is lending specifically targeted towards women with all the incentives that come with it. We've introduced the Women in Business Advisory Council in 2012, and you have seen some of the members and opened a Women in Business Advisory Center in 2015, uh, which uh, Ruth uh, runs now. So I want to talk a little bit uh, briefly about uh, the Rising uh, uh, Woman uh, uh, Initiative. So the Rising Woman Initiative was first launched in 2018 in partnership with the Uganda Investment Authority and the monitor publications, all our partners were here represented. And the main objectives are to provide a platform for women businesses uh, to grow their capacity and really achieve the heights, to showcase women in business through profiling and advertising in the media. So we try to use our media spend uh, to do that. And we've been guided on how we should, we shall include the babies, right? <laughs> Uh, to provide women in financing solutions that uh, meet their needs while negating the phobia for borrowing among uh, women. Borrowing is a good thing. Um, uh, most people see borrowing as a negative thing. Uh, everybody that scales borrows because you, there's a point you reach where you need to increase your capacity uh, beyond what you have. So uh, it's okay to borrow if the funds you borrow are put to productive uh, uh, use, right? And that's an important thing. Most women don't want to borrow, right? I don't know if you've heard uh, the saying, Sente H. Kazi, right? Have you heard of it? Those of you from around, you can translate for your neighbor, right? But that's what uh, it means that you get it and you tie it a little and keep it, right? Uh, but the reality is that you, you must fuse that money with Sente H. Sajja, right? <laughs> if men are the ones who borrow, right? Uh, then go ahead and borrow as well, right? Right, uh, if, you, you know what I mean? There are some things they do which you should not do, but there are many things which they do, especially in business, 
which you must do, right? And borrowing uh, is one of them. So since 2018, four successful editions, 2018, 19, 20, and 21 have been organized and directly benefiting over 55,000 women through regional trainings in the districts of Busheni, Mbarara, Kampala, Mbale, Guru, Jinja, Lira, Masaka, Ketugum, Iganga, Ivanda, Ajumani, and Hoima. In 2018 and 19, the 20 winners of the highly competitive uh, proposal writing process benefited from the mentorship programs uh, with some partners in Nairobi. Due to the restrictions occasioned by the COVID-19 uh, SOPs, the Rising Women activities on 2020 and 2021 were modified to include TV talk shows that brought together seasoned entrepreneurs and mentors to a deliberation on issues affecting women in business and focused on trainings uh, of trainers uh, for group leaders in Ajumani, Hoima, Iva, and Kutkun to manage through the pandemic. Um, so the Rising Woman 2022, which is the fifth edition this year, uh, the initiative will celebrate the resilience of women in business across the country and extend in, in intensive business management trainings relevant with the current business uh, environment. Season five of the Rising Woman Initiative is said to be launched uh, uh, on 23rd uh, February, which is today, right? Uh, right? And uh, uh, we look forward uh, to the outcomes of today uh, going uh, uh, beyond. So some of the activities that will take place uh, uh, in this period in this season. Uh, one, the proposal writing competition, uh, which is going to uh, be happening for the first time in, in two years since the last time we did this. Each of our speakers, you heard them speaking about the competition, uh, and, uh, and, and so you have to write proposals to get into uh, the competition. The competition will be open to all women in business from ages 18 and above, and will take a period of four months. So this time around, the proposal writing competition, we have three main categories. One will be on digital commerce. The uh, second category will be on agribusiness and value addition. By the way, uh, in tap partnership with the Rubber Bank Foundation, uh, we have the Agricultural Development Center, uh, which is run by Ms. Josephine Mukumbia here. Maybe you can stand up so you can be seen, yeah? Uh, so ADC is located uh, in the same compound with us uh, in Nakasero behind the Blue Tower, that uh, very wide open space, right? Uh, behind one of the most famous residences in Kampala today, right? Uh, that is where Josephine uh, operates from. Uh, please feel free to reach out, right? So the top proposals from each of the categories will be awarded a cash prize uh, of 10 million shillings uh, and a mentorship trip for the next uh, best seven uh, proposals. So we're trying to reach out to as many women as possible. The criteria for proposal writing will be open to all women in business. One, two, for companies, shareholding uh, should be at least 50% owned by a woman. Uh, previous winners are not uh, eligible for the proposal writing competition because now you are mentors, right? Uh, you have scaled up, right? Uh, and participants will compete uh, in any one uh, of the categories. The second thing will be regional power trainings. And uh, the regional power trainings will be conducted in seven cities, uh, focusing mainly on empowering women with skills necessary to help them revamp their business potential, uh, especially as part of the COVID-19, post-COVID-19 recovery. The trainings will take a two-day format, inclusive of the business advisory uh, caravans. The third aspect uh, of season five will be uh, the advisory caravans, the women in business advisory caravans. And as part of, uh, of this, uh, the team will be going uh, regional, the advisors. The team is composed of experts in different fields and they will share experiences, best practices in business management and advise women entrepreneurs on common barriers to business while at the same time highlighting the opportunities which should not be left unseized. And then finally, we will have the award-winning uh, uh, ceremony, uh, which will be the climax on the 22nd of the, of, uh, of, of the 
2022 uh, Journey of the Rising Woman Initiative. Uh, that award uh, ceremony will be organized to recognize the winning proposals from the competition. This ceremony will happen in uh, November. And there we will showcase uh, um, you know, the, the winners um, and give them the platform and then carry them through uh, the following year, giving them visibility, introducing them to different parties, giving them the space to shine and to thrive. We will also have uh, the fully sponsored uh, mentoring uh, trip out of the country for the top 10 winning proposals. The trip opens up new uh, opportunities through exposure programs with other successful women-owned uh, enterprises outside uh, Uganda. And that's why we are looking forward to the time for you to start exporting uh, some of you, right? Um, that, that is really when we begin to take the country uh, to the next level with the a new generation, a new breed uh, of entrepreneurs, uh, and in this case, women entrepreneurs. Then we, have, we will have the Rising Women Mentorship, which I hope you can participate in as well. Uh, participants will benefit from free mem mentorship by selected successful uh, women entrepreneurs uh, over the time. So I thought I would take you through uh, part uh, of, of that program and, and, uh, and spare you uh, a speech which I had, but I thought that uh, those uh, remarks would cover the program so that we all know what uh, it will be like. I want to thank our partners, uh, uh, Nation Media Group, uh, Uganda Investment Authority, in a special way I would like to thank the Honorable Minister who has made time out of her special schedule, very busy schedule in this time, and for all of you make, for making it uh, here today. Thank you very much. Mr. Katamba, allow me to ask you to remain on the stage because I do not feel worthy to introduce the next guest. Uh, but before I introduce, or I let him introduce the next guest, we would like to acknowledge the presence of Ms. Josephine Mukumbia, the Executive Director, Agribusiness Development Center. You are most welcome. <laughs> and also the Head of Marketing, Nation Media Group, Elizabeth Namaganda. and the General Manager, Commercial Nation Media Group, Mr. Sam Barata. But for now, Mr. Katamba, please help me call the next guest to the stage. Uh, th thank you very much. You know, you can get accustomed uh, to this machine. Uh, <laughs> if you start stand between Mr. Chalimpa and the minister. Uh, but I also want to use the opportunity while I am here to also acknowledge the DFCU team. If I can ask you to stand up, uh, William, uh, Executive Director, Mr. Godfrey Mundua there in a pinstripe suit. You can't miss him, right? Uh, Jude uh, can't see me, right? Uh, and Mrs. Miranda uh, Bagenim Soke there. Uh, who, these are part of the greater team that uh, make it happen. And Ruth, uh, of course, in charge of the women uh, in business at, at DFCU. Please give them a round of applause um, for the great job they do. Uh, now, uh, it is my singular pleasure to uh, invite the Honorable Minister of Housing, Land, and Urban Development, uh, the Honorable uh, Judith Nawakova, uh, to address us uh, on this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Katamba, for inviting me to address this important meeting. I want, first of all, to bring greetings from the Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, who is unable to be with you due to other duties outside Kampala. And I believe she conveyed the same to the organizers. And I want to thank the organizers of this wonderful program. It's indeed a wonderful program because it touches a woman. And if you look at the statistics, we could be even 
much, we, we are more than the men. So when you touch a woman, you have touched everyone. So thank you, the organizers, for this wonderful program, for reaching out to the rising women in Uganda. Because you may find that maybe, probably, they never had where to begin from. But with this program, they have had an opportunity to interact, but also gain skills on how to run their businesses. Allow me to congratulate Sandra, Lynette. Your products are really wonderful. And I pray that maybe one time, I will spare time to come and see what you do exactly, because I believe you can be used to inspire others that it is possible. Because very many women out there, they are struggling, but when they hear such stories, they can be inspired to work better, but also to do more. I, before I read the speech of the Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, I, I allow me to also tell you that as government, we are committed to support the women of Uganda. There are a number of programs that are drawn up specifically to support women in business. And when you look at the way the parish development model was designed, it is targeting majorly women and the youth of Uganda to benefit from the resources at that level, the parish level, which we believe it is the lowest level of service delivery in most of our areas. And I would urge you to encourage women out there to take in interest and also participate in the parish development model program, which is now our baby, and it is going to be launched on the 26th, which is Saturday. I go now to the speech by the Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, the Director General of Uganda Investment Authority, Mr. Chalimpa, the Managing Director of DFCU, Mr. Katamba, the Managing Director Nation Media Group, Mr. Antale, the Rising Woman CEO, Madam Rosie Mutiabule, invited guests, winners, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you greetings from the Right Honorable Rebecca Alitwala Kadaga. She's here with us, and that's why she sent me to represent you. And I want to commend DFCU, the Nation Media Group, and UIA for having come up with a unique business and good concept for the women of Uganda. Quite often, women may not be given the due attention, especially in the media. Women were used to be portrayed in a, a different style, but when we see the nation media coming on board to support the different funders, then we believe that the face of a woman in business is going to change, and uh, a woman will be portrayed positively. Then I'm therefore very happy with the organizers for coming up with this initiative that seeks to grow and empower women in leadership, but also in business. It is more sustainable mode of business because it creates an ever increasing base of clients who appreciate and also can afford the needs and information which is required. 
The model also recognizes the most critical sector in Uganda's development efforts. Personally, I believe that women in small businesses are the engine responsible for unlocking growth and better livelihoods at our individual household levels. Unlike the men, women have a natural calling to always put their families first. On our part as women, we are interested in seeing the welfare of our family, looking after the children, seeing them having a better education, better health care, you know, bet better everything. And uh, with that, it gives them more time and attention to work to see that what they desire for is actually achieved. This is the reason why we see a lot of women at the community joining the savings groups. Where I come from, Mitiana district, we, re we normally find women organized in groups. You can find like three groups on a village. And these groups are normally referred to as savings groups. They try to save despite of their challenges. They meet weekly, save, plan on how to invest at that local level. And at the end of the year, they again sit, re look at their books or records, and share the profits, if at all. They share their profits in that small way. And it has helped them to live together, work together, share ideas, which makes them more empowered, but also focused in as far as economic empowerment is concerned. I therefore have no doubt that the Rising Woman Initiative is already transforming communities in a bigger way. I'm particularly impressed that this project has set aside an amount of money for women to compete for and use it to improve their businesses. So thank you very much. You can be sure that our women will work hard for this money and put it to good use. I know they will work hard because they are not very extravagant. They always want to save. And uh, I was also informed that over 60,000 women have already benefited from this project since it started five years ago. Thank you for supporting the women because I know it creates a multiplier effect as it trickles down to the grassroots. I therefore want to thank the FCU Nation Media, UIA, and other partners involved in this initiative. Thank you for redefining how small businesses can be run by the women of Uganda. And as a minister in charge of lands, housing, and urban development, I know the importance to increase land tenure security for our women in Uganda to own land. And I would suggest that in your trainings, if you can include a mod, a mod on land tenure security, on how women can get titles, because if they get the titles, then they can access credit very fast. But without titles, it is very difficult for them to get credit which can boost their businesses. So I will invite you. If at all you can spare time to come to the ministry, we'll brainstorm how we can have that component incorporated in to assist the women of Uganda. Of course, we are trying as government to secure. Again, thank you. Congratulate everybody to try 
and make their way through, but also those who tried and failed. Never give up. You try and try and try and try until you go through. And I believe that you will have some time to move around and mentor other women because we need mentorship for the women down there. They need to know how they can also get their way through the space and be in position to make money but also contribute to the economic development of their country. Thank you again for God and my country. Thank you so much, Honorable Judith Nabakova. I would like to ask also as we launch season five of Rising Woman. Season five. Uh, we're going to have a few of the launch materials on stage as well. Can we have them go up now? Okay. Well, this is the moment. Uh, our guest of honor, please, you can unveil one of them. The middle one. Uh huh. 